In today's episode, we're going to be reacting to some of the creepiest clips I found on TikTok. Let's get into it. Do not look this up, but is this the most cursed account on TikTok right now? But I'm sure you're all very aware of the whole smart schoolboy situation. But when I made these videos before, a lot of people were commenting saying I clearly hadn't heard of this one. So this is an account that has been sent to me a lot of times known as Shay St. John 666. They haven't actually posted since like 2018, 2019, but it is still pretty weird. Now, there is absolutely nothing online about this guy, just a few Reddit forums from a few years ago. Some areas suggesting that it is basically like just a person acting, doing it for a laugh, trying to get attention. But other things, yes, suggesting something a lot more sinister is going on with this guy. As I say, he hasn't been in the headlines for a while, he hasn't posted, so what the hell has happened to him? The videos are creepy, I don't really know what's going on, but it has nothing in comparison to this guy, surely. Sure. I'm sure it's nothing nefarious or sinister, it's probably just someone creating really creepy content, but it is really disturbing, and it can cause someone to question that creator for creating them, because they are some very odd videos. If any of you have ever seen any of their videos, let me know in the comments because it's been many years since I've seen them, but I remember them being very disturbing. Is anyone else like too aware? Like I'm too aware that this is all temporary. This is all part of the human experience and that nothing matters and that everything is subconscious programming and everything is made up. Like the days of the week, that's made up. Monday, someone decided this day is called Monday, this day is called Tuesday. It's all made up. Like humans made everything up like money. It's just made up. It doesn't mean anything. Like there are so many different things like road signs, the ro street names, like somebody just decided this street is named that name. Like it's so stupid. Like I'm just, it's really hard for me to live my life and just be a normal person because I'm just too aware. I'm too, I'm always seeing things from a background perspective, like I'm seeing everything, I'm seeing through the programming, seeing through the matrix. Does anyone else know what I'm saying or am I just crazy? I'm sure there is a lot of people out there that feel like they are aware. And if one person is aware, is there anything that they can do about it? You would think that, okay, I see all of these things happening, maybe I can actually do something about it. But it just seems like even if you are aware, you're kind of stuck in the cycle of being unaware. Basically, someone in these comments pretty much summed it up. It said, just calm down, smoke a joint, and enjoy your life. You only have one. One of the most famous alien abduction cases happened here in Kentucky. Mona Stafford, Louise Smith, and Elaine Thomas, all from Liberty, Kentucky, went out for Mona's birthday. On January 6th, the three women went to the Redwood Eatery in Stanford, Kentucky, had dinner, left at around 11.15. The women were heading back home to Liberty, Kentucky on Highway 78 going towards Houstonville when they noticed a large red object in the sky. At first, they thought it was a plane that was crashing that was on fire. But then the object got closer to their car and they realized that it was just hovering next to them as they drove. Louise Smith was driving and she said she lost control of the vehicle and it was going 85 miles per hour and her foot wasn't even on the pedal. Then they said a bright white light filled the car and it was thick like fog. And they felt a very intense burning sensation. They ended up waking up at the entrance of a cattle field and just continued home. They arrived home at 1.20 a.m. and were shocked because a trip that only took 30 minutes took almost two hours. This was in the 70s, so at the time there were no cell phones, so they ran to their neighbor's house to call the police. The police in the area didn't take them seriously, so they called the Navy, and the Navy reported all this information to local news stations, and MUFON ended up getting a hold of these people. The women had physical burns on their skin. One of them even suffered a severe eye infection, and they all suffered from severe PTSD after this, so they started seeing a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist actually did some hypnosis sessions with them, and they drew what they could remember under hypnosis. Till this day, there's no explanation as to what these three women saw that day or experienced. But their stories all stayed the same until they passed away. Hey, there might not have been any cell phones back in that time, but there was probably definitely drugs. Specifically psychoactive ones. It kind of makes me wonder if these ladies were having some kind of psychoactive trip. Maybe they got into some acid and they weren't aware of it. That might not be the case, and it could also be something much darker than that too when you actually think about it. Like, they could have went through something extremely traumatic that was not aliens. It could have been a person chasing them, and, and bad things could have happened, and their minds just coped it as being extraterrestrial. 
I would like a little bit more information about this, maybe even a little bit more about what they told the, the psychiatrists. I would never be able to sleep again at night knowing that I got potentially abducted by aliens and blanked out for the last two hours. I'd be afraid of something like that happening again. Let me know in the comments if you've heard about this story, if this is a real story. I've never heard about this before. And also, let me know if you've ever experienced something similar, because I find these types of stories extremely interesting. Hey, if you haven't done so already and you're enjoying the show, go ahead and give it a like. In today's video, I would like to get us up to 850 plus likes. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. For everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you for being subscribed and thank you for watching. And I know it's been about a week since I've posted a video and I'm trying to get out of that. I've been extraordinarily busy at work and I'm trying not to come up with excuses. And I've also been doing content surfing. I've been trying to find a bunch of content to react to because it's kind of been getting a little stale in the TikTok world. A lot of old videos have been resurfacing and I don't want to reuse videos that I've already used in the past. So it took me a little while to find a good collection of new videos that I thought were interesting that I wanted to learn about or I wanted to watch. So that's one of the reasons why it took so long and on top of my day job really was occupying a lot of my time. So I'm really sorry there's been a big gap of time since I've uploaded my last video. Hopefully I'm back up and running and I can upload a video every single day like I have been. So if you've been missing my content, get ready for some more of it because I'm about to have a video at every single day. Hopefully. You ever see a restaurant called um, the Yellow Deli? Yeah, I did. I think so. No. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know that the restaurant is run by a cult, and actually, you're actually not allowed to eat. People are actually supposed to not eat at the restaurant. Wait, why? You're supporting a cult, so that the the cult is run by um, it's called Twelve Tribes, and it's the Let me old see a picture. Yeah, yeah. Yellow Deli. Yellow Deli. Watch, and it's the only uh restaurant in America where all the employees are unpaid. In California, right? Yeah, L. A. L. A. Uh, no, anywhere in the states, there's bunch. There's a bunch of them. Oh shit! So it, this is like a franchise. Yeah, it's a franchise. Damn. Yeah. I definitely heard it. Like I heard of this yeah, before. Yeah. So the the restaurant is is used to fund the cult and like recruit new people. So after you're done eating, yeah, a person went in there and they were given a pamphlet. No. Right after, the, uh, it says uh, the twelve tribes. They read it. Would you like to join? It's free. We all have part ownership in this deli. What the yeah. Wait, are they selling a franchise or are they selling no, their no, souls? No, no, they're selling all oh, kind of then. If you put it in that perspective, they're kind of selling their souls too because it's unpaid work. Oh. The only restaurant in America that's unpaid. So none of the workers are paid? Are paid. They're, it's because they kind of own it. Yo, that's yeah. wild. And they're so smart. They put it, all their franchise locations close to colleges and they're, and they're open 24 7. So oh, when shit. college kids are hungry, yeah. they go into the deli. Oh, you want to join this? And, and that's those are the ones that are most like exactly. on edge or like, wow, that's that's unbelievable to me. I cannot believe someone would fall for that. Maybe there's something greater going on behind the scenes that they're not talking about. Maybe these employees or these followers of the cult are getting paid in some other way. Maybe they're getting compensated. Maybe their college is getting paid or something. There has to be something going on and they're not just working for free. I have never heard of this place. Let me know in the comments if you have. Also, being in California, how can you afford to work for free? Man, we're living in some crazy times. I would have never thought that that was someone going to steal items off of the porch. That genuinely looked like a delivery driver about to drop something off. What's the deal with the Freemasons? There's only a few real Freemasons that exist. In other words, when I say a few, I'm talking about maybe a few hundred, maybe at the, you know, at the top level that really, really know the ancient secrets. This goes all the way back to deep, deep antiquity. We're talking about 30,000 plus years ago, there were these brick masons in ancient Kemet called the Shatu. After the Great Flood, Amun-Ra, aka Marduk, he's known as Marduk in the Bible, M-A-R-D-U-K, Kemet, he was known as Amun-Ra, but he had these brick masons helping him rebuild the land of Kem. And these brick masons had the secret knowledge of space flight, technologies, how to turn stone structures into advanced computer housing, data storage devices, as well as power generators and many other functions. A lot of the stone structures that were built 
were actually multifunctional stone computers. If you're going to a place where, where you only have limited resources that you can't take a factory and a whole bunch of workers with you, what do you do? You learn how to work with what's there. And they mastered stone masonry, but they also encoded and embedded a lot of the wisdom and knowledge from the ancient Egyptian mysteries and the Kemetic mysteries into the structures. Now, these Freemasons were called Shatu. As a matter of fact, the Shatu helped Amun Ra escape. In the last, there was a pyramid war. There were two pyramid wars. The second pyramid war in the tablets talks about the fact that the Shatu helped Amun Ra escape through a hidden path in one of the pyramids and before he left he decreed he would leave the kingdom to his Ra Kam. Ra Kam, K-A-M, translates now into shield. Kam translates into shield, Ra shield. Over time it became Rothschilds and so this decree came down tens of thousands of years ago. Who's the richest family on the planet worth 700 trillion dollars combined net worth? The Rothschilds. I thought I would add this clip in because I had someone in my comments saying that they were interested about Freemason history history or Freemason theory. I personally do not know much, much about Freemasons, so I'm kind of slowly learning about it. And I think that this might be a path that I'm going to start picking up on because on this channel, I haven't really covered Freemasons that much. Now, as far as what this guy's saying about the Freemasons and ancient history and all that, I can't validate that. I'm not 100% sure if any of this is true. Please leave a comment down below if you know. Or leave a comment down below if you know where I can find some really good information about Freemasons because it is a topic that I would like to look further into. I just want to offer a huge round of applause and congratulations to everybody that participated in the 2024 Chase Bank Glitch. But you also will be awarded with a nice federal felony. I don't know how people are going to talk themselves out of this and say it wasn't them because you legitimately deposited a check that was not good into your own bank account and then withdrew the money. So they already have all your information. They have your name, date of birth, social, your address, your work address. Maybe if you still have some of that money that you took out in this glitch, you should probably pay for a good attorney with that money. So for everyone that participated, you'll be getting some nice shiny bracelets in the near future. To make a long story short exactly what this Chase Bank glitch is, if you're not familiar with it, someone online, TikTok to be exact, found out that you could put a faulty check into the bank and they would add the funds into the account and you could withdraw it, even if the check wasn't valid. So a person made a video online and said, hey, everyone should do this make a big check, draw out the money, and it's yours. Unlimited money glitch. And now Chase is kind of catching on and they're withdrawing the money even if they don't have the money in the account. So now there's some people out there sitting with negative thousands of dollars in their Chase bank account because Chase said, well, you took from us, we're going to take it right back even if you don't have it. And I could only imagine waking up one day, getting a notification saying that there's been an overdraft in your, your bank account and it's like negative 10, negative $15,000, negative $100 is stressful enough. And I, I just can't believe people did this. There was literally people lining up at Chase Banks to do this glitch. We had this not long ago with Cash App. There was a, where there was this incident when Cash App sent people thousands of dollars in their account. People withdrew it and Cash App kind of took it right back. I, I just don't know why people would be brave enough to try something like this out because the banks just have so much of our information. If they want to clean you out, they're going to be able to. Let me know what you guys think about this. I don't blame the people for trying, especially if people really need money, but the long term, this was not the best idea to go. Did you hear about that Greek Orthodox monk? named Mahalio Totolos. No. It's this monastery in like this like really remote part of Greece. It's on a mountain, right? No women have ever entered it what? and stuff. He was dropped off there as an infant and was raised in that monastery, became a monk. And he died recently at the age of like 82, I think, without ever seeing a woman. Oh my gosh. He had no idea what a woman looked like. It'd be terrifying. Isn't that crazy? The first time I've ever seen a woman, that would make your mind like explode, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, why is your eyelashes so long? I mean, because they probably all looked fairly similar, right? Yeah. So yeah, that would be very trippy. Isn't that crazy yeah. though? Yeah. Do like, you feel just, bad for him? I mean, he probably was probably happy. He didn't know what he was missing. <laughs> Josh, you know? the correct answer is, yeah, I'm really um, upset that he never got to meet a girl like you. Oh. Yeah. That's what you should have done. <laughs> That's what I would have said. Why are you talking to my wife like that? I would oh never say that to your wife. 
You just did. I'm glad that monk didn't meet her. Oh, he would have been. He would. <gasps> Boo women. Oh my god. I wonder what that does to you psychologically. Never ever once meeting a woman, probably don't even know that they exist. That has to mentally rewire you or something, right? Like, now is this guy just attracted to men? Is he just not attracted to anything? What What is that like? That's got to be a crazy experience. But I guess if that's what you're used to, it's not that crazy. But to me, it sounds pretty bizarre. Have y'all heard what's going on with the Boeing astronauts? The two that are currently stuck in space? If not, don't worry about it because we're going to talk about it right goddamn now. Small panic. So the two astronauts that are currently in the ISS unable to get home messaged headquarters to report a strange sound that they were hearing. And I know what you're thinking. Fox, what did it sound like? I'll do you one better. I got the clip. Let's listen to it. And I didn't know if you could connect into the Starliner and let me uh, keep my let you hear. I don't, I don't know what, what's making it, but uh, I don't know if there's something that maybe connected uh, between here and there, making that happen. But uh, anyway, can you do that? We can configure that, Butch. Give us a minute and I'll call you back when it's ready. Did you hear that at the end? Don't worry, I'll isolate it. We'll play it again. Now that sound is specifically coming from the Starliner. And genuinely, it sounds like a few different things. The first thing that you'll pick up clearly is distortion. It sounds like there's 10 stacks of reverb on that sound because it is a recorded sound that's been captured and then played through a phone, basically. If you're old school like me and you grew up without iPods and shit like that, if you've ever played your song, a friend on the radio through your cell phone, that's what it sounds like. The first thing I thought was banging, like somebody was going like that. But then also, if you listen to it a little bit, it has kind of like a little end, you know, kind of like almost like picking up and like slapping down a cord or something. Or like one of those echolocation sonar thingies in a movie. There's so many things that this could be. And I'm so fucking excited. I am also really curious as to what that sound could have been. To me, it also did sound like banging of some sort. But I can't imagine the sound coming from space. It has to be coming from within their unit. And I can't believe that they are still out there. That's just so crazy. For something that was supposed to be so quick, now it's just a year-long event. I really hope the best for them out there in space. And you know me, when it comes to people being out in space, I don't know if I necessarily believe what we're seeing and hearing on TV and on the news. These people could just be actors. This could all be dramatic to keep people on the edge of their seat, to keep people funding NASA, Boeing, all these places. I have very strong conspiracies against that kind of stuff. But nonetheless, if those people really are out there, I wish them the best of luck because that's got to be a horrible, scary situation to be a part of and the fact that they're kind of under Boeing kind of makes it even scarier because Boeing does not have a good streak of luck right now have y'all come across these home AI building robots yet y'all literally telling y'all that people must not be working or these jobs are being taken away this right here is the Hadrian X and this thing can build a house without no waste this thing right here can set down the walls of a house during wind and rain and don't even need to pay this thing extra money Within a whole day, this thing can lay down the foundation for a four bedroom, two bathroom house without no hesitation. And you can see it over here working hard and you just have one person just supervising it, making sure it's getting the blocks in place. But this thing right here uses laser technology for accuracy and stabilization. Now here's another one over here called Phoenix that was put out by a company called Icon. Now they had already constructed a first home building AI that only built one story buildings. Now this one over here is building two story structures. As you can see the walls, those things are perfect. Like look at that y'all, it's literally like a wedding cake. Look at it, and then they show you the wedding cake. Look at that y'all. That shit is crazy. I don't know if these AI robots are a side effect of people not showing up for work and people are waking up and realizing this is an illusion, this matrix, 
or the other way around that these AI robots are coming into life and then people are not being called into work. Either way, we are looking at the destruction of the workforce. Dang, let me tell you, when I used to work construction, I could have only a hoped or wished to have a machine like that to make my job easier. Now looking at it, I'm like, dang, that's going to put a lot of people out of work. Kind of scary because that is someone's career. That's someone's job that they no longer will have to do because there's a machine that's mandated by one person and probably eventually won't even be that. It'll probably just be a robot operating it completely. I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this. I really like it and I really hate it. Let me know in the comments of what you think about it. You guys have to explain this video to me because I have no idea what's happening here. And I do not think that this is fake. It comes from a CCTV camera in Mexico. A group of guards at this location noticed what appeared to be a woman standing outside the property. Two Two of the guards go to investigate, but as they approach the area, the following happens. All of the guards are speaking Spanish, so I've added English subtitles. The clip was uploaded to YouTube in 2018 by a man named David Rodriguez. It's assumed that he is the individual speaking in this video. I'll say it again, I don't think that this is fake. It has less than 100 views on his page. It's clearly a live recording of CCTV footage. Let me know in the comments below what do you believe is the explanation for this. And if you can explain it, I'll feature your comment in an upcoming YouTube countdown. I don't know. It doesn't look fake, but I do think that there's some kind of optical illusion. That's my only explanation. But it it does look like someone standing there at the end of whatever that is. Let me know what you guys think about this one. Got this weird series of flashing lights that's just been stationary, invisible from our backyards, and they're flashing the same pattern and just hanging out in one spot. We have not seen them move, and we've been out here about 10 minutes now. Tell me that doesn't look like a giant triangle shaped craft. I'm not gonna lie, that does form a triangular looking shape, but normally when I see flashing lights, I think drone, and that's probably just three drones up in the sky, but I could be wrong. Let me know if you guys have any other thoughts of what they could be. America is falling, or should I say, Rome is falling. We're gonna go over a lot of stuff very quickly. Before we get into the gangs moving all over the US, the stock market literally lost one trillion dollars today. Trillion! And literally just one week ago, Warren Buffett sold $980 million of shares of Bank of America. Before we go any further, this all legend is my opinion based on the news. If you know Warren Buffett, then you know it's no surprise that he was able to foresee such a crazy thing happening. Back to this, I tried to show you guys this earlier, but for some reason, y'all didn't see it. It's not just in Colorado anymore. We're having reports that these gang members are also in Dallas, Texas, and Chicago. In Chicago, they had tons of police reports that there were 32 gang members that closed down a building. I showed you the other police call in the last video, and now allegedly they're saying that Mexico is going to start busing them to the United States with passage, food, and etc. Whether that's true, I don't know. This is allegedly video of what happened in Chicago, I cannot confirm or deny. I came and show you all this video, but in Dallas, Texas, a group of these people beat up a helpless man. 
and I can't confirm this, but this says that Chicago gangs are taking on the illegal gangs. And as of today, we have North Korea aggressively targeting the crypto industry as disguised as social engineering attack. So altogether, the financial department is tanking. We're being overthrown from the inside, and North Korea is attacking the crypto industry. And now we have South Korea offering $40,000 almost for people to get married and have children there. So if you're having a hard time in the U.S., you could always go to South Korea. Y'all had to know 2024 was not going to leave without throwing hands. Dang, that's some pretty scary stuff. It's almost kind of like a black swan event in a way. It's so unpredictable and so many things are coming out at it at once. But honestly, it seems like the whole world is kind of going this way anyways. Almost every state's starting to get really crazy with gangs or people really doing harmful acts. So please, be careful out there. It's getting wild. There were several Arcs of the Covenant. One of them was located inside the Great Pyramid, inside the King's Chamber. There's a stone rose granite box in the King's Chamber mm -hmm. that are the exact same dimensions in cubits as the Ark of the Covenant. It was, it was added later because the pyramid had lost its ability to generate the full power. So they put the Ark in that rose granite box to add the extra technological piece so it could continue to pr produce electricity. So this thing was very important. That's the main reason why Moses was chased when he fled Egypt. He went and took the Ark of the Covenant out of the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid. And the Pharaoh was like, damn, I let you go. And now you took our power source? We need that back. And so they chased him down. He didn't cross the Red Sea. That's another one of those remixes. Mm -hmm. He crossed the Sea of Reeds when you go look at the Aramaic version, a much closer and smaller sea. And then if you look at, look at the tectonic plates on USGS, and all the other uh, gov sites that show you all the tectonic plate movement, you can do a geological rewind in that region, and you discover around that same time period that the biblical text is talking about the story, there was a, um, a, a, plate, a tectonic plate slippage, which would have caused uh, a tsunami. And when you have a tsunami, it sucks all the water out, and you can walk across dry land, and it brings it crashing back, just like it says in the biblical text. So it probably was a tsunami. Nobody's standing there with magic powers. That's actually the first time I've heard this story about Moses. I was always told that he crossed the Red Sea. I've never heard of him crossing the Sea of Reeds before. So let me know if that's a new one to you, because that is a new one to me. And I'm not saying I necessarily believe it. I'll have to do some more research, but that's an interesting one. The following video is from a TikToker who was doing a, an eating video, showing her audience what she was eating, and then the little compact mirror that she bought. But the thing is, is when she opens that compact mirror, she firmly stepped into the realm of paranormal. She captures something in that mirror. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Gente, vou comer com vocês o melhor brigadeiro da vida, que é da doceria da Lulu. Olha que bonitinho que eu ganhei no dia das mães atrasado, mas ela me deu. É um selinho de bom para abrir meu saco. Olha, que lindo. Vou abrir. Ai, meu Deus. Amei. That really could have been anything, anyone. It could have been a picture. It could have been a show playing in the background of her phone. It could have been really a number of things. I don't know if that was an actual ghost or not. I kind of don't think so. But it could have been. If it was, that was probably one of the best sightings that I've seen of a ghost with the cleanest looking face. But my suspicions are telling me it's not. So this lady noticed that these birds that were on her property haven't been on her property lately. And she looked around and found them dead next to her house. She was going to make a burial site for them and bury them. But she noticed after about a month and a half to two months that these birds have no worms, no maggots, no foul odor to them whatsoever. And she's like confused about what's going on. Look at that. You got one, two, three, four, five six birds six of them that are dead that's the little one that's been three weeks it's been dead for three weeks and again no worms no maggots no foul smell look at that y'all she went to go get her son to ask her about it again these birds used to be around her garden and watching like what's going on so her son went to go put on the gloves and this is what he found y'all check this out
There you go. You got the chips. Whatever it is, that's one of the birds. And he searches all of them and they all have this within them. Look at that, y'all. Every single one of them had them in it. Now, I'm not going to play that video all the way through because I'm pretty certain that this is fake. And I really hope that someone didn't just play with bird carcasses to put little phone chips in them to make a video because that's just kind of morbid and sad. And for anyone to leave deceased animals for over a month before you bury it, it's kind of weird, right? Like, that's... This, there's so many things wrong with this story. I do not believe that these to be really real birds that have chips on them. Now, they're probably real dead birds, but those chips were not on them beforehand, I don't think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Again, like I said during the mid-tro of my video, I'm really sorry that I have not uploaded every single day within this past week. I've been extraordinarily busy. But I should be back on track now. I have a plethora of content to react to. There seems to be more and more videos coming out every day now that are more recent, more interesting in my opinion to react to. So thank you for being patient with me. I'm really sorry that there was a huge delay in videos. I'm back. And I would also like to bring up if you've made it this far into the video and you're, you're still listening to me talk, leave me some recommendations on how you guys would like to send me videos that you would like for me to react to. Now I have reacted to quite a bit of content within this past year. So it's kind of hard to find fresh content, but I'm always interested in seeing what you guys send me. So if any of you have any idea the best way for me to receive content from you, whether that's a link in a specific folder, should I create a discord or something for you to send links to, let me know in the comments because I'm really curious about how to do that. And I think there's other people out there that are doing that where they're actually receiving videos from their subscribers and that sounds fun. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get something figured out for where you guys can send me links and I can react to them completely blind. Because even when I do react to these blind, the videos that I find, I still get to watch one to three seconds of it before I consider it interesting enough to say for a reaction. If you guys send me videos, I don't even have to watch the first second to three seconds. I'll just blindly react to it and it'll be a completely fresh experience for me, you know? If that makes any sense. I know that sounds kind of weird. But as always, if you enjoyed any of the clips that we did watch today, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.